Hey guys, in this short video, I want to discuss with you why supplementing with L-carnitine may be a bad idea. Carnitine or acetyl-L-carnitine is an amino acid that's found mostly in red meat. So the muscle tissue from animals like cow, bison, or buffalo, and lamb. Now acetyl-L-carnitine or L-carnitine is also sold as a isolated supplement that is promoted as or marketed as a fat loss supplement. And this is because L-carnitine has the ability to actually stimulate a process or a metabolic state or condition known as lipolysis, which is the use of or the liberation of fatty acids to ultimately be driven into the cell for energy purposes. So what L-carnitine does in other words is it binds with free fatty acids in the blood and delivers those into the mitochondria or into the cell to be turned into energy. Now although this seems like a really good idea to use something like L-carnitine to oxidize fatty acids to make energy and to promote fat loss, the fact of the matter is using fat for energy, also known as lipolysis, is a very inefficient way to produce energy which we'll explain why in a moment and is also very damaging to the body overall because over the long term as your body becomes more reliant on free fatty acids for energy the hormonal profile that drives this state of metabolism is actually going to result in a more sluggish or a slower metabolism that is ironically enough going to make the body more likely to store fat so the body can later try to use that fat as energy so although in the short term the accompanying hormones that drive lipolysis might help you to lose some fat or burn fat overall your metabolism will become slower and weaker which will make you more likely to accumulate fat in the long run and this sort of leads us into why supplementing with l-carnitine might not be a good idea for good health although it may promote superficial fat loss in the body it will so at the expense of good metabolic function and this is for a couple of reasons perhaps the most important thing to understand is that lipolysis which opposes glucose oxidation is driven by adrenaline so I've talked about this more on my personal YouTube channel which is that in order to enter and stay in lipolysis the body needs to be producing an excessive amount of adrenaline because it's actually adrenaline and the norepinephrine and other ephedrines in the body which liberate fat from its stores to be converted into energy and actually through breaking down protein in the body in the production of methothionine is L-carnitine produced which therefore is attached to the free fatty acids and delivered into the mitochondria. So the fact of the matter is in order to even enter lipolysis and to produce carnitine naturally to bind with the free fatty acids in the body there needs to be some degree of catabolism happening in a high production of stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol so although it seems like a really good idea to break down fat free it up and deliver it into the cell for energy the fact of the matter is this isn't going to necessarily even happen without the body or the adrenal glands producing adrenaline and cortisol and if you've watched these videos before if you know anything about the effect that these stress hormones hormones can have on the body, an excessive amount of adrenaline can lead to anxiety. It obviously is going to impair proper metabolic function or oxidative phosphorylation in the production of energy. It is very much an anti-thyroid hormone and impair the thyroid's function throughout the entire body and specifically the thyroid hormone's effect on the cell and the cell's ability to oxidize glucose and uptake oxygen. Not to mention an excessive amount of adrenaline is ultimately stimulating a stress response which can lead to nervousness, tension, hyper hypertension and high blood pressure, it can lead to headaches and overall a sense of uneasiness and anxiety. So having really high adrenaline is not something that you want and it is something that is going to happen inevitably if you are trying to promote lipolysis. So I think that's the most important thing to understand is that really anything that's trying to drive lipolysis such as the use of isolated L-carnitine may also evoke this sort of stress response and stimulate the production of adrenaline and have a powerful anti-thyroid or anti metabolic effect in the sense that it's opposing normal metabolic function, which is the oxidation of glucose for energy, 
in the production of 36 ATP, whereas lipolysis or the oxidation of these fatty acids is going to yield in much less ATP, less carbon dioxide, and more lactic acid. Which leads us to our second major downside of supplementing with L-carnitine or doing anything to try to promote lipolysis, which is that the fatty acids contain significantly less oxygen than that of glucose. Glucose or carbohydrate sources usually have six times more oxygen than that of fatty acids. The fatty acids usually have about two oxygen atoms per molecule, which means that once they're delivered into the cell, the cell is less capable of respirating and producing carbon dioxide, the byproduct of oxygen consumption. And this is problematic for the basic fact that carbon dioxide is actually a very protective substance. Everything in the entire body is changed positively by the presence of carbon dioxide. For example, carbon dioxide can help to detach oxygen from the hemoglobin in your red blood cells, making oxygen more available for use. So greater CO2 production means ultimately greater oxygen availability and consumption to the cell for the production of energy. So it creates sort of a positive feedback loop or positive cycle. And one of the things that tends to happen under hypothyroidism is that there's less oxygen available to the cell and low carbon dioxide output. And as I've mentioned in the past, both lipolysis and ketosis result in significantly less carbon dioxide output, which means that the body is either in a hypothyroid state or just not properly converting glucose into energy and likely relying on fatty acids. So beyond these stressful anti-metabolic effects of taking something like L-carnitine or promoting lipolysis, there is research that shows that consuming L-carnitine can actually increase the risk for atherosclerosis and it does have a negative effect on bone metabolism. Not to mention that L-carnitine and its stimulation of lipolysis can inhibit the transport of thyroid hormone, both T4 and T3, into the cell. So in conclusion, the basic reasons that L-carnitine supplementation isn't necessarily good for overall health is that it does stimulate a form of stress metabolism known as lipolysis which is the use of fat for energy, which isn't as glamorous or health promoting as you might think it would be because it is reliant on the production of the stress hormone adrenaline, which can not only interfere with thyroid function, but it can interfere with good overall metabolic function. So if you've been trying to supplement with L-carnitine for fat loss purposes, keep in mind that it's going to likely cause more negative side effects than beneficial ones. And this is just one example of how there is such a thing as unhealthy weight loss or fat loss and really anything that is going to promote fat loss or weight loss through a stress response through stimulating something like lipolysis is going to interfere with thyroid function and proper metabolic function. So this is really just an example of how weight loss doesn't equate to good health. Although in our society, weight loss and being thin is generally promoted as something that is healthy. When in fact, most of the time, weight loss is usually a sign of stress, aging, and disease. So if you're trying to lose fat or weight in a healthy way, keep in mind you do not want to promote the production of stress hormones like adrenaline or norepinephrine, and you certainly do not want to try to promote lipolysis. You're going to want to take a look at the function of your thyroid in digestion if you're having weight issues and you're trying to lose that weight in a healthy way. So in terms of L-carnitine, I did mention earlier that it is abundant in red meat, and I do think that red meat has a place in the diet because it provides essential bioavailable, easy to digest protein, and a lot of nutrients that you won't find in other foods. So the consumption of red meat, although it contains L-carnitine, I don't think is necessarily going to cause adverse health effects because it does have other uh, health promoting qualities to it or nutrients that promote glucose metabolism like zinc, copper, it contains some bioavailable iron, fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin K2, and again the abundance of protein in there. So as long as you're getting the L-carnitine through whole high quality red meat and you're balancing that red meat or that muscle meat intake with gelatin rich cuts of the meat, so oxtail, the shank, uh, consuming a bone broth or some sort of gelatin rich product, that will help to balance any of the negative or anti-metabolic effects of consuming red meat alone. So as long as you're eating sort of in a traditional nose to tail fashion, you shouldn't have to worry about the L-carnitine that is present in red meat. And if anything, trying to get some red meat into your diet would have more beneficial effects on the metabolism 
metabolism than not. So most of what I'm referring to in this video is going to come back to taking an isolated supplemental form of L-carnitine, not necessarily consuming it through red meat, granted that the rest of the diet is balanced. However, that brings this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And for those of you interested in how to lose weight in a healthier way that isn't going to disrupt normal metabolic function, definitely be sure to check out our healthy weight loss course, which you can find on our online wellness academy in the description box below, along with links to our blog and our online tonic herb shop.